there's a huge market to be the one who provides the ads instead. So, the obvious solution everyone says is, oh yes, you know, the entire web should go SSL. <sighs> Unrealistic security people who don't understand the scope of the problem they're trying to solve and thus make recommendations that have no um, uh, ability to be implemented in reality, a uh, little problem. Uh, this is a hideous solution, but it does respect uh, reality. First off, why can't every website go SSL or TLS? Ignoring the performance issues, which it is true, you can throw enough money at the problem and uh, you'll get high enough performance for SSL. It turns out most websites are done what's called virtual hosting. Meaning, the website you get is dependent on the DNS name you use to retrieve it. So you have lots and lots of names that all go back to one address. It's just like we were talking about earlier with DNS rebinding. Names are different than addresses. You know, it's actually the same in the real world. You have one address that's an apartment complex. Lots of people live there. So it's just the same with the web. Lots of people live at the same hosting providers. But here's our problem. When you do SSL or TLS, you don't get to say, oh, but who I really wanted to speak to was this site, or that site, or Alice, or Bob. You just say, hey, you up there at this IP address, who are you? And only one name can come back. Now, there is a TLS extension to fix this. It is actually supported in Vista. Um, but it's going to take a while for it to be uh, generically supported. It's going to take a while before you can presume every client coming to your website is able to say, hey, can you prove you're Alice? Or, hey, can you prove you're Bob? Right now, all they're saying is, hey, uh, who are you? Oh, you didn't say you're Alice or Bob or Charlie or whatever, so I'm going to reject you. That's what's happening now. The ability of most sites to use SSL is actually massively restricted. All right. So one idea is we're going to use SSL or TLS not as a generic solution for acquiring content. We are going to use it just to uh, get ourselves a loader. We're going to get a Flash applet. We're going to get some JavaScript. We're going to get some Silverlight. And what it's going to do is it is going to insecurely retrieve content for us. Yep. But then it's going to go ahead and use the HTTP session keys, and it's going to use it as an HMAC. Or it's going to find some way of deriving an HMAC. Now, the key that it gets is going to come over the SSL session. It's going to download content insecurely, and it's going to see if this insecure content matches hashes. If it does, great. It goes ahead and it pushes it into the DOM. It turns out I've become a bit of an, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not actually that hard for a Flash object or a Silverlight object or a Java object to go ahead and push things in. So what I'm saying is we load one of these apps over SSL, we download stuff insecurely from existing frameworks, we see if it is the valid content according to hashes, and if it is, then we push it down. And that, believe it or not, actually works. I'm building a system to actually do this in a generic way. It's called NDK. It stands for not domokun. Um, and it should work. A reminder, the reason we have SSL in the first place is because the commercial people were like, we would like credit card numbers. Credit card numbers equal money. We like money. Um, that's why we have crypto in the browser at all. Believe me, it wasn't a automatic thing. Um, a note to a slightly different audience. Um, to people who like sniffing traffic, ad replacement is going to drive the entire web to encryption because without it, the average website will be unable to pay the bills. The performance issues of SSL do pale compared to the damage of, to sites of being unable to actually make sure the providers host their ads. If you want ad, this not to happen, you might want to get the carriers under control. Now, is it possible, this is where the real fun stuff happens, is it possible to get better data regarding the inevitability of all of this? <laughs> this is fun. Now we get some old school packet stuff. Um, who here knows where a transparent proxy is? Cool. 
Transparent proxies go ahead and they take all traffic from your client. Wherever IP you're going to, it says, oh, this is port 80. I'm going to redirect it to this box. It is going to aggregate here inside provider network. This is interesting. Among other things, it means that without even a DNS for binding stunt, Flash can download an applet from you know, the IP address for DocSparrow.com. Flash can connect to port 80 on DocSparrow.com and can say, please give me Google. DocSparrow.com doesn't have Google. But guess who does? The provider cache. It's right there. Because by the time that connection gets to the transparent proxy, the fact that it was going to the DocSparrow IP has been lost. And it just sort of assumes it was originally going to the Google IP. That's a nice assumption. Um, now, what this means is that, what did I say earlier about our requirements for detecting provider hostility? We needed to filter out all the other networks. Well, guess what? The transparent proxy isn't sitting on the internet on some random location in the middle of the core. That's within your provider network. If the transparent proxy hosts some things at some speeds and some things at other, you have detected network provider hostility. Very, very simple. But what if it's not a transparent proxy? What if it's just a silent sensor? In other words, you still have the existing packet streams. But it goes, oh, I see a host for this, I'm going to speed it up. Or, oh, I see a host for that, I'm going to slow it down. Well. Now, these arbitrary connections still going to port 80. Now it actually is making it all the way to the docsparrow.com IP address. But you know what? When I go to docsparrow.com, I can ask for uh, 10 megs from CNN, from Yahoo, from FARC, from wherever. And if then content, now what we're looking for is we're looking for a silent sensor that is interrogating the stream enough to know what host it's trying to go to. And you know, if the same exact server can host content at different speeds just by impersonating different identities, you have detected provider hostility. Now here's the problem. I am not the only packet jackass out there. In every major networking company, there's some protocol guy just as smart as I am saying, oh yeah, well I'll see that your IP address was wrong. Oh yeah, I'll see your TTL was wrong. Oh yeah, I'll see, okay, fine. I'm going to go ahead and defeat myself here. Is it possible to build a hostility detection system that uses traffic completely and utterly indistinguishable from real world traffic? Well, let's see here. We want to spoof sites on the internet. We want to know what these sites would see. We want to be able to respond as if we were these sites and we don't want the real sites to interfere with our interference. You know, good luck. That's not really possible. You need to have like I don't know. Well, you need to have the sequence numbers. TCP uses these random numbers to prevent random people from just injecting traffic. And because HTTP is built on top of TCP, uh, I, as a guy in the middle who would like to go ahead and impersonate all these sites, I don't know these sequence numbers. So I guess there's nothing I can do, right? Oh, browsers are extensible. Holy crap. Um, so I go online and apparently you can download an ActiveX object that puts a packet sniffer in a browser. <laughs> it fires JavaScript packets, objects, events on packet reception. I, I, I don't think I've ever cackled with such evil glee in my entire life. In fact, uh, packet clauses coming to town was being sung around the office. <laughs> oh dear. So I'm creating a tool called Inspector Packet. What normally stops Mallory from pretending to be a random site on the internet? Well, Mallory doesn't know the sequence numbers the client will use, and Mallory is going to have to compete with a real server for the sending of data. Well, what do we have at hand now? What is our secret weapon? We have a sniffer that's going to leak those sequence numbers over to Mallory. So now that Mallory knows the sequence numbers from the sniffer inside of the browser, Mallory can go ahead and send the appropriate stuff to the client. Ah, but what are we going to do about the server? You know, the server was talking to the client. Well, if you remember the stuff from the, uh, the Chinese attack, just send a reset. Hey, server, um, 
Client's gone. It's not talking to you anymore. You can go ahead, tear down that session. Client is still going to send acknowledgments over to the server, but this is this great moment where the changes in internet security totally act in my favor. Normally, the client would acknowledge all this traffic because Mallory's spoofing all these packets that are correctly in window. Mallory's spoofing all this traffic. Client acknowledges it, acknowledges it over to the site, over to CNN, over to Yahoo, wherever. Normally, Yahoo would be like, what? why are you talking to me? I don't have a session open to you. Stop it. But we got firewalls now, and the firewall's like, I have no idea who you are. You must be trying to attack me, so I'm just going to shut up. Guess who is actually sending going to receive that? Well, you know, Mallory is not in line with CNN, Yahoo, whatever, so Mallory is never going to see that traffic, except Mallory has a sniffer on the client, on Alice. And the client's actually going to feed Mallory all these acknowledgments over JavaScript. I call it Ajax, you know, TCP acts over Ajax. <laughs> Tunneling is fun. So um, I saw this article on Slashdot. The goal is to identify the application used on the network, but some of these devices can go much further. Those from a company like Nares, for example, can look inside all traffic from specific IP address, pick out HTTP, look at Gmail, assemble mails as they're typed out by the user. Oh, you're going to look at what a server's doing, huh? Who says you're actually talking to the server? Given a colluded client, which of course I'm developing, um, oh, I did another one of those. Given a colluding client, I can impersonate anyone who doesn't act my traffic. I can generate arbitrary traffic. Oh, you think Gmail's saying what now? Um, I can provide deep packet inspectors with a whole new realm of stuff to inspect. Um, so uh, I recommend inspecting this um, deeply. Very, very, very deeply. Conclusions. DNS rebinding threatens the boundaries of your network. There are multiple rebinding mechanisms. This will not be trivial to fix. Anyone who says it is, is on crack. Um, the web could use some real work on its underlying security models. Unfortunately, um, the stuff that we have is very good for public use, not so much for private. I want to really say that Flash, has done, Adobe's done a lot of work in this regard. I really respect it. Um, we may need to consider applying at least integrity and perhaps encryption to all web traffic on the internet because if we don't, advertising is going to die. And there are mechanisms for detecting provider hostility. And um, if you are trying to deploy them, I'm watching you. So that's what I got. <laughs>